Grappler Bucky has recently become famous with the main character being used as a reference to peak male physique for obvious reasons. And while we do see him meal prep and pump iron from time to time, the actual manga is about dudes beating the ever-living shit out of each other. And they do that not for political power, not for fame, not for women, but for the sake of every man's dream to be the strongest on earth. Now of course most of us eventually give up on that dream, still there's some fucking idiots who cling to it, who spend their whole lives struggling in pain and misery so they can claim that title. And the place where they try to do so is this small arena full of sand, teeth and nails, where two men come in, fight without any rules and only one of them comes out. In this colorful setting, Bucky is constantly trying to get stronger, trying to cope with life and doing lots of insane shit, all for the sake of eventually taking down his father, who's currently known as the strongest being on earth. And I talk about all of that and more after this quirky title drop. I'm a god. Bucky is notable as a manga and should be read by most people or at least most people should give it a chance almost exclusively because it's illustrated in such a unique way. Now of course that's not to say that there aren't any good aspects to the manga, however the art is what really makes it feel special. The first thing we're gonna go over and the most obvious one is that this has a very uh, peculiar style. And that has a good side and a bad side. For example, if you were to compare this to most modern manga or even most manga at the time, this feels incredibly original and it's just simply interesting to look at. But at the same time, shit can look a little wonky sometimes. A good thing to look at is heads. For example, they can be anything from comedically big to like weirdly small. And other times a page comes along where you have to do one of these to you know exactly examine what's supposed to be happening here because it's kind of tough to figure out. However, this is the exception. The norm is that the fights look very well and are very well structured. However, before I go too deep into that, I have to make one important distinction. And that being that the manga and all of its illustrations can be separated into two. First of which, and what takes about 70 to 80 percent of this whole thing, are the fights, in which we're gonna get pretty deep into in a little bit. However, I just wanna discuss very, very shortly the other 20 to 30 percent, which is basically everything else. Now, technically, that can include a few different things, but it's mostly just world building. And while that can, you know, just be one of our dudes achieving something insane or just like an intriguing part of human history, uh, what I really, really enjoy in the world world building are the more reserved and grounded moments in the manga. For example, following Bucky and his daily routine or just like looking at him doing some special training or finding out that he has a dog with which he goes on a run from time to time. And it's these small silly moments that almost feel like a slice of life from time to time that really help us see that Bucky is different and how he almost lives in his own world when compared to everybody else. Which, you know, in a world building aspect is pretty fucking good, but even that is, is very passive. The more active parts that are still not fights are these very important and what feels like intimate moments that some characters go through. The structure, the care, the time, it, it all of it shows in these pages. Be that this unbelievable cluster of visuals that continues appearing in the manga from time to time or just the lack of visuals and the silence in the illustration and in the actual situation. It's so many things that are done to make these moments feel impactful and holy shit, in the context of the manga that can really, really be felt and in fact in some situations it's a little too impactful. And since we're talking about extreme shit, how about these fights, huh? I'm not even fucking around by the way. You can see like bones sticking out of bodies like all the time, people regularly piss themselves, people regularly get just fucking killed and everybody is almost all the time actively getting brutalized. All of those things can be technically viewed as very very vile, however what's actually disturbing is how well paced and how well illustrated the fights are. I mean, I swear to God, sometimes, only sometimes, I could hear the impact a punch makes. I could hear bones cracking. I could hear bodies dropping to the floor, screams of agony, and all of that shit 
can't really be analyzed. You just have to go and experience it on your own. However, what I can do for you is just provide you with some general artistic highlights. The creative backgrounds and the sheer amount of uh, different ones is genuinely surprising. I'm normally not a huge fan of this practice. I prefer to just look at the actual background and feel the mood of everything that's going on. However, even I was impressed with this shit. My favorite one being, by the way, these like w weird like uh, twisty things. This shit just looks kinda cool, you know? How when we are building up towards a punch or a kick, uh, when we actually see it, it's just a white line, or how the blood, whenever it's there, even though it can be kind of overlooked in most cases, is so unbelievably detailed and adds so much severity to the situation. Character expressions are taken on a whole new level in here, because in most mangas, either characters have exactly three expressions, or they have a lot of expressions, but everything is way too silly and way too goofy in here, Everything is unbelievably realistic and yet super exaggerated. It's very unique and it feels great. Reality warping is always fun, however in here the technique isn't only used when people are glaring at each other, it's also used whenever somebody is getting choked out or has taken like a like a good one to the chin and we see their perspective shifting or, or we see a shit ton of weird creative stuff being done in, in those certain situations and it's just, it's just fucking cool to look at. I mean, for fuck's sake, even the dust in here is stylized. There's so many things that contribute to the special feeling of the art. And on top of that, these stupid ass nerds that made the manga used human beings as actual reference and worked as they were making the manga with actual fighters. And on top of that, they based characters on real life historical figures, which definitely helps to blur the line between fiction and reality, which in turn makes some of these scenes way scarier and way more impactful than they have any right to be. So I just wanna say again, if not for anything else, Baki should be remembered and praised for all of the artistic feats it has achieved. However, apart from that, what else does the manga have? Well, not much. <laughs> I mean, this really is just dudes punching each other. Sometimes it's in the form of a tournament, other times they see each other in the wild and decide to duke it out, but it doesn't really matter what's happening. Nothing is ever connected to any political struggles or uh, the fate of the world or anything larger than life. This, this is just pure and simple fighting. And that is definitely not bad, right? I enjoyed it. However, I think it's fair to say that this isn't exactly a peak storytelling we're observing here. For example, characters are introduced all of a sudden and then forgotten all of a sudden. Other characters are made out to be a way, way bigger deal than they actually are. And <laughs> while sometimes that works and there is a good payoff to all of that, most of the time it's just like meaningless and, and kind of random. The general teaming is kind of shaky as well. The, this whole human nature and uh, wanting to be the strongest as a man, while it did resonate with me, it was mentioned exactly three times in the whole manga, which doesn't you know exactly exclude it from being an underlying plot, however it's very very clear it's not what the story focuses on. And all of that leaves us with exactly one thing. Bucky and his journey. This boy right here is very hard to figure out because sometimes he can be, you know, a little bit of a show off. Other times he's very cold and reserved. And, you know, not to say that he's the strong and silent type per se. However, there is definitely something to him. Something that when you look at him makes you makes you feel like he knows more than you somehow. And that is actually very reasonable as a thought if you know how much crazy shit he's been through. And in fact, by the end of his little introduction arc, which was like one third of the manga, you are completely captured by his personality and enthralled by his character. It's, it's amazing how interesting this guy actually is. Sadly though, he and his general journey have one very big and very obvious problem, but we'll get into that in a little bit because I want to talk about everybody else. Now I mean this in the best possible way when I say that mostly every character in here feels extremely socially inept. <laughs> 
these motherfuckers are so unbelievably weird in how they interact with other people and how they interact with the world and on top of that they have character obviously in fact they have quite a lot of character uh, whatever you're envisioning when picturing these dudes and how they, would they sound and how would they act just just Take that and crank that shit to a hundred. And when you combine that with how fucking weird everything is, these boys can feel a little extreme at times. And for me personally, that's a big fucking plus. And even the bad side of all of this, which is that some characters can feel a little too silly at times, is kind of overwritten with time because as you observe them function and like fight and do different shit, they just kind of grow on you. Now, what I said up until now about every other character can kind of apply to Baki as well. He can be a little extreme in some situations too. However, something that every character here lacks, but the other characters are fine for it, but Baki only struggles by it, is the lack of character progression. Because it's not a problem that these goofy motherfuckers are just as weird as we first uh, saw them in fact they are getting progressively weirder as we explore their characters however we kind of know what Baki is about or at least his general struggle and since the whole manga is following him in his developments it seems kind of obvious that he should undergo some kind of a change uh, but that unfortunately doesn't happen now let me clarify a little something I mean that Baki doesn't change in the present however since we get a few quite you know big arcs of him in the past you can clearly when you compare them see that he has become much wiser and has uh, had some obvious personal growth however him as an individual right now as we're observing him most of the manga doesn't really change all that much and most importantly his goal that he's been struggling towards achieving is extremely underwhelming in fact it barely feels like there is any progress made. And that, in my opinion, is not because homeboy over here can't uh, write a good character moments or good character progression. I think it's obvious that he can. It's just that he doesn't want to. And all of that becomes very, very clear when you look at how the series will continue to develop. Because technically, a Grappler Baki, looking at all of the chapters that have been released in the Baki franchise, this is only like one fourth of everything that's out there. And it's Again, very, very obvious when you look at the current state of Baki, uh, what's the direction he wanted to take everything in. And on top of that, to show us the direction of the manga, we have the very last chapter that while yes, he has Baki reflecting on the past and on the future and all of that, the actual last pages are of these two dudes going into the empty arena so they can finally fight each other. Which again just shows us that the manga isn't really centered around a personal journey of understanding life in human nature in this unique and abnormal setting it's more so concentrated on dudes with lots of fucking muscles beating the shit out of each other in insane ways and that's good that's great awesome even i fucking love it but it's definitely not peak fiction in fact i would say it's a light nine however even that's maybe a little too much because i have a very personal connection to baki in almost the same way i do with slam dunk and with king and asura which was obviously inspired by baki where i it feels so incredibly inspired by looking at these characters that I feel attached to go through so many struggles to achieve something and, and the passion and the care they put into stuff directly motivates me to pull my hair out of my ass and do something. And because of that, Bucky will always have a special place in my mind, even though I acknowledge that it's obviously not perfect. For those who don't know, I'm running a bit of a manga club here, where you know the next three videos, and in fact you know the exact mangas they're gonna be about, so if you feel like reading ahead of time, then you can do that, and you know, if you decide to do, then pop into the Discord and we can talk about them. And I don't really have any closing words to put here, apart from <laughs> that the next manga, the next few mangas are gonna be considerably shorter than Slam Dunk and Baki, so uh, I'm gonna, you know, start posting more regularly, and I feel like way, way better, so, so that's kind of cool so uh, so expect more shit in the future